So welcome everyone to today's webinar, which is the secrets of the Q program with uh, our uh, associates, the AP Association. Um, my name is Paul Unwin. I work here at Caxton as our partnership integration manager, and I really specialize in the payroll and accounts payable space within our product and lead with our team on making that space as the best it can be. I've got Mike Paveley and Max Kent here with me today from the Accounts Payable Association. I'm going to hand over to those two to do their introductions, and then we can run through the Q program with them both. Paul, thank you for such a warm welcome. It was great to meet your team. Um, hello to everyone watching. I'm the Partnerships Director at the Accounts Payable Association. I'd like to introduce Max. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks, Paul. Um, great to be here with you both today. I'm uh, Max Kent. I am Group Sales Manager of the Accounts Payable Association and also Lead Consultant for the Quality Programme, which we're going to be talking about today. Hello, great, great to meet you both guys on here again. I've, I've now I spoke to you a few times previously, but it's always good to uh, collaborate with you both. Um, Mike, really just to kick this off, who are the Accounts Payable Association and really what brought them into existence, just so anyone watching can really learn a bit more about you? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. Um, we are a, first and foremost a member community and we were formed more out of necessity than anything. Our CEO and founder, Jamie Radford, was um, running shared services for a, a large telecoms company, had lots of people with lots of different roles and responsibilities underneath him at the time. And and he very quickly recognized that um, as, a, as a body of people, accounts payable, had no community to belong to, were very underserved and and were almost neglected in the in the structure of corporate status. There was no you know, it wasn't seen almost even as a profession, you know, and and so the association was formed eight years ago now um, as a on LinkedIn, as a forum group of almost like a peer to peer network, in effect, um, and very quickly grew. Um, you know, everyone got together, started sharing their their, you know, their challenges and and supporting each other. And 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 so the, the community was born um, of its own volition. And we um, we've since then taken it on to become um, the benchmark standard for training and, uh, in the profession. Um, and we have members all over the world now. We have a very active community in the UK and Ireland region, some links into Europe as well with students and corporate members. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we, we exist to, to really fulfill three main things, which is to increase the reward, the recognition and also become the voice of AP. And so a lot of what we do is to support our members in helping them become the professionals they are and giving them a voice within their own businesses and obviously helping them with their own career development and their own business transformation programs at the same time. That's uh, very informative from my perspective as well of really learning where it came from. I knew it existed, but I didn't really know the background of what it had grown out of. So always good, which obviously that then led on to what we're here to talk about today, the Q program, which you, you've launched. Um, and really what, what was the demand max that led to that creation and what is the Q program in essence? Um, so, okay. So the, yeah, the quality program was in, um, in existence for around two years before I came into the program. So it's being run with a couple of trial clients and members within the AP Association. So some of the very first members went through the quality program first. I then picked up on the program and in the last six to eight months have revamped the program and are working with the team um, at the APA to develop it into a more a wider review. What it is is a six point review of the AP function and it tends to be our larger members, but it does apply to really anyone with an AP function. And the purpose of it is to do a full um, 360 best practice review of that function. So those six pillars that we talked about, those six, six core points of the Q program are around the function itself and what it does, its processes, how it operates within a business structure, the people that are within the, um, the AP function and their specific roles, their training, how they're developed, their skills, um, the technology they're using, what they've automated, what they have in, in process, where they're looking to go with software and technology to up, um, upgrade their AP function, save time, um, save resource, that kind of thing. Um, sustainability is another area that's coming becoming a big area for AP. And that really focuses on um, faster payments, uh, looking after local suppliers, looking after um, smaller businesses, 
um, have literally just come from a, a quality program review and they uh, they were talking about how they've got a policy in that particular member on um, trying not to work with any business uh, or supplier where they're more than 70% of that business's turnover because it would it could cause them cash flow problems. They don't want to be beholden to um, you know, the reason why a business goes bust, which is a sustainability ESG angle from a AP perspective. So it's quite interesting how they're building those kind of elements into the quality program. And then the final part of that is around disaster recovery and resilience. So we really cover all those areas, but it, it does a comprehensive review of the function. Um, and then we give the department uh, an accreditation, which is the Q program award. Um, they get certification and they are able to use the golden Q, which is highly um, prestigious award. They can use all of the documentation, all of their um, outgoing information. So for all um, AP departments that have a, uh, APA Q program accreditation, they're very proud of that now. And they're very, very much sharing it on all of their um, documentation that goes out. And some businesses are using it as a, a competitive advantage um, to show that they've really got that accreditation in place. So it's really starting to grow. We, we've done about 25 of our members now, and we've got a whole uh, series of Q programs lined up now that we'll be carrying out over the next year. So that's yeah. it in a nutshell. <laughs> In a very quick nutshell of, uh, yeah. So it's really a deep dive into what best practice is in that space, because obviously you're going into lots of organizations and are able to collate that information together to give people that invest into the program really what is seen as best practice across the across the profession, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And as Mike says, there wasn't really a place for AP um, before the association was set up. So we really are um, building ourselves to be the the focal point that kind of accredited membership association where everyone can come to us for best practice and advice and once the once the business have done the q program we we add in in the final report a set of development recommendations so there's an ongoing process to really develop those ap functions into into the sort of um high high performing functions that they really should be and working with those teams they really are on that path as well so this really sets them on a guided path where we can line up the right uh, courses, qualifications and software that we provide in the AP that will keep them on that journey as well. So once they're on the Q programme, it really does guide them towards success. Yeah. Obviously, you spoke about the pillars that you uh, focus on within that area. Is there any kind of questions that are within every single one that you look at or do you kind of tailor it to the business that you're going into and get a bit of background and then tailor the questions or is it that they get some questions shared with them that they then answer so you get that background and can really reflect when you go in to do the audit yeah a good question i mean it's a standard set of questions that we've got those questions are developed by our education team and they're refined and developed over over time so we move with the trends in the industry the things around software um, is particularly pertinent because there's always new technologies there's always new types of technology particularly in ap automation as you all know where um, it started with ocr and now it's going generative ai and people may have a technology in place but they're looking to implement something new and and so they're on a path to upgrade so it's really what's that continuous improvement um, and that's really where they see that sort of development within the program itself. So it's, yeah, it's, it just definitely takes them on a journey. Yeah, I'm going to say it's definitely something we're seeing at Caxton, that technology automation kind of piece and people wanting to be more, I think, tech savvy moving forward of having more onto automation and less kind of manual processes, which is something that we're getting fed back from people we're talking to. So that kind yeah. of definitely sits in with what you're, talking about a question to both of you really off the back of that what's the feedback you're getting from these members off the back of the course being held it's um fantastic i mean i've um i've come from new balance um literally i'm in warrington right now just giving them their award they're happy for me to share the name because we've just had a photo of all of us together in front of the new balance sign with a certificate and we're going to share that what far and wide and that's that's exactly the point of the Q program because the AP department normally is seen as an admin function that sits behind the scenes, doesn't really get um, any light shone on its processes and all the good work it's doing. This documents all of the work, all of the hard work that's gone into developing the function to where they are now. We award and accredit on that basis to say that if you filled out all the information, we can award you on that basis with a view to being continuously developed. 
So it puts all of the hard work they've done in a document that gets shared amongst the senior team with the award and accreditation. So it's the first time that the AP team really get a chance to shine and have their work uh, highlighted to the rest of the business. Um, so coming from the meeting today, the AP team leader at New Balance, you know, said she's going to, you know, tell everyone that they've got this award now. They're going to put the Q program logo on all their email signatures. Um, they're going to make sure that they're, you know, it, it is shared as much as possible to make sure that that team has, has its accreditation is really proud of it. So it, it's really becoming a, a, a great kind of accreditation to have that most AP departments are going for now. Yeah. The, um, sorry, the, the other point I'd just like to make is that the over the course of our evolution as an association, everything we've done, because we are we're, we're different to many other institutes and associations, and and the differentiator is perhaps that we are we are more of a peer to peer network and community than we are an institute in effect, and so the development of the Q program in conjunction with Jamie. Uh, others others in our education team and our influencer community important to recognize the valuable work of our influencers we recognize a number of influencers every year and at our forthcoming event in may we're going to be announcing this year's influencer lineup um the q program was developed in effect by our members for our members so it it's not us being prescriptive and telling our uh, our members what they should be doing it's our members actually echoing back to us could we have a tool that gives us the ability to understand where we are in these key areas? And, and that's, we have a house of Lords strategic briefing every year, which is a deep dive into, into what is important. What has, what have been the challenges from the year prior and, and looking forward to the year ahead. And it's out of those kind of collaborative sessions that the Q program was developed. And the, um in, in terms of the feedback, I, I sit on the partnership side of our business and, Many of our, our partners, I know Caxton are looking closely at the, the accreditation as well, um, are very keen to understand how they can support um, customers, you know, in terms of their journey. And it's not always about selling something. It's more about how do we understand what the challenges are and how can we work with you to achieve best outcomes? And I think the Q program provides the framework to, to enable um, wherever you're at as a business, you have a datum by which you can then measure. And as, as Max said, whatever your pace and at whatever level you may be operating at in different levels of sophistication, automation and various other things, it just highlights the opportunities and helps then build the business case for maybe the C-suite and the senior leadership within a business at a strategic level, understand the value of the opportunity for maybe looking at doing things differently. And that's the real value that our members have shared with us is having now a, an architecture within which to frame the, the, uh, the transformation journey. Yeah, it definitely, definitely sounds more of a proactive program than some of the ones I've dealt with historically. I, I was originally in construction for a long time and a lot of the accreditations you did in that area were the same questions year in, year out. So yeah, listening to what you guys are saying and it's, from your network that definitely would not be a, a, a static field it's going to be a very fluid uh, environment that your members are inputting into and really having that chance I suppose it gives them a chance for feedback as well to to you as a team of what's going on in the in the space and any any best practices that you might not have picked up on that's a kind of niche area you're getting brought to the forefront and able to push out to your members via this program I suppose yeah absolutely I mean there's constant uh, forums and uh, group group discussions ongoing all the time around various elements of it and we have to pick up and glean the information from that move with the industry move with our members and keep up to date with everything that's going on it's it's it is fast paced with the advent of technology coming in there's new technologies new software new legislation new points of how to do this coming in all the time so you've got to keep abreast of it all yeah definitely i just had a question coming in about it actually about the the audit so is it just a one-off audit um you get audited you get your accreditation and you can use it or is there like a review after a certain amount of time that goes back in just to check that they're still upholding what you're expecting and what they spoke about yeah great question absolutely it's uh the accreditation lasts two years the process generally takes around eight weeks um to compile the information 
build the draft report, get sign off from our team. The education team then provide the development recommendations. We go in face to face, do the final um, review, give the award if it's passed. Um, we um, meet the whole team and really that gives that chance to shine for the whole team to really hear all the parts they've done on that. We then come back in every three months to check in with the customer on development recommendations and make sure that we're helping them as, and supporting them as much as we can to implement where they can to make those development recommendations actually uh, real and so they actually see the benefits of it and that's where we um, the APA can really support by targeting on specific areas we go into staff skills matrixing from the quality program at that point so we then go further into the skills of each of the team members and then start lining uh, courses to them qualifications that kind of thing so it's really tailored and um yeah more and more so i think um as we're, as we're guiding them down that journey yeah we said that links to the other question that i've seen come in around the education team that you mentioned at the ap association what does that look like and really what do they do off the back are they going off the back of the the q program or are they outside of that as well that people can approach yeah. them about various training functions or more so so our head education team is headed up by Kat Moy who is um from the industry so she was an AP leader for many years and has a wealth of experience so her uh Kat and her team um look at the Q program questions they review every uh report that gets submitted um check that we've included everything they provide insights and industry recommendations into the report so it does come from industry um they also provide up graded questions for our staff skills matrixing software as well. So that part is continuously being improved by the education team. Um, they're also, so that education team also works with our key influencers as well to take in up-to-date market or industry information um, from the coalface, so to speak, because we, we need to be engaging with the members who are right there doing it at that time to stay relevant and make sure we're in line with everything that's that's updating and changing to make our courses and um, processes as relevant as possible. That's uh, sounds good. The um, off the back of it, really, just as a bit of a takeaway for people today, is there anything that you're seeing off these um, Q program audits that is a takeaway that people can really look at and think this is what I need to be concentrating on in the next six to twelve months? Is there something that's coming up as a key theme for you guys? Um, yeah, so firstly, not a lot of people are doing statement recovery or duplicate invoice checking. So um, the, when you mention that to a lot of um, the Q program members, as a first step, they would either go, well, we've looked at it before and not done it very recently, or we've not done it at all. Um, the stats we have is that 0.05% of all transactions will be a duplicate or a, um, a charge that's recoverable. There's various solution partners we work with and uh, that can work on that, either from a software and um, monitoring basis or literally going and sitting on the phone to suppliers and recovering charges. So that can generate money um, that our AP teams didn't even know existed. That can fuel the accreditations, the software, um, and potentially um, automation as well. So that's a real trend where they're not necessarily knowing that that exists or that they could get money back to support some of the projects. AP doesn't necessarily have the sort of budget sign off applied to it that other departments, you know, procurement marketing would have. So they generally have to go cap in hand and ask for budget to pay for some of this stuff. So that is a great trend we're seeing that really unlocks some of this stuff. Um, and I'd say the other side of it is there seems to be a trend of um, many businesses going to a full suite provider um, where it's been specified by um, perhaps procurement or finance. So lots of businesses moving to something like Dynamics 365 for the full ERP and taking into account HR, um, payroll um, and all sort of other departments as well as AP. AP doesn't seem to get much of a look in in that solution so it seems to be an afterthought so we we are involved in quite a few com, uh, conversations where the proprietary 365 invoice ingestion software isn't fit for purpose so they're looking for a third party integration and that could be any one of our solution providers but um it's that integration piece seems to be quite a big talking point at the moment where they're given a big full implementation but the ap team is, seems to be an afterthought and then we have to build in and support them on to build something that's more fit for purpose for the types of invoices they're receiving and the types of transactions they're processing. So that's a that's a big trend at the moment, I'd say. 
Would you would you concur with that, Mike? Max, I'm I'm not as close to it as Max is actually, and I'll be very honest about that. But one of the things that um, Jamie speaks about a lot, and 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 I know it's a core issue for many of our members. There's a perennial battle against fraud, not least of all in the payment space, and and I know you guys do a lot around that. But fraud compliance, increasingly looking at, um, you know, we're talking to a, a member this morning about the challenges of of working with other jurisdictions in Europe with their different requirements and the compliance element. And without the ability to understand where you are as a business, when those challenges come at you, you haven't really got a strategic uh, way of addressing where your skills gaps or your, your your the gaps in your business might be. Um, and every year at our House of Lords briefings and in our conferences and all up and down the country in our regional member events, the same types of things across the six core pillars of our program will be echoed every time it's people process technology compliance esg they are perennial challenges in the ap function and, and they get and they change over time as well so um yeah we think um by giving the q program architecture to businesses to use very definitely to employ and to benefit from it gives them a, a fighting chance at staying current and, and at least moving uh the transformation journey forward yeah are you finding that people that are implementing those systems to do that check-in around in duplicate invoices and chargebacks and things like that max are finding that they are potentially even like cost neutral even cost negative because the money that they're spending is actually saving them more long term or is it just a, a slight a slight return on investment that they're getting out of it yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't say it, it finds enough money to pay for the whole department to make it cost neutral, but it certainly can be a significant chunk of money that comes back. I mean, obviously, the bigger the AP team, the more transactions, the bigger the recoverable charges could be. So it's proportional, but it can still be, a you know, that 0.05%. If you're spending many millions, then that can be a significant number. And I think that's what's opening people's eyes to that and going, actually, there's a way for AP to unlock some of the value and and move forward with some of the things it wants to implement without having to ask for money again. Certainly cover the cost of the software implementation, though, I suppose, if at yeah, worst absolutely. case, that, for the sake of getting that. But yeah, no. Yeah, um, sure. as, as part of that audit, obviously, we deal in payments. Does their payments processing get audited as part of that and is there areas of best practice that are shared i'm not i'm not saying everything goes through caxton and we're we're realistic here but is that kind of process audited as well of how they could be doing things better so i know some accounts payable teams have access to various different accounts they use various different systems and really is that kind of thing streamlined as well to say look there's possibly better ways you could do that do this does that fall under the q program Certainly does. Yeah, we, we definitely cover payments and supply of payments. There's, there's how fast people are being paid, how they're being paid, the mechanism of how they're paid, the payment terms. Um, if there's processes for different types of suppliers, smaller suppliers, local suppliers, that feeds into ESG. So, I mean, that side of things absolutely gets covered. The technology side of payments and payment providers such as Caxton, I think is going to be more and more relevant as that sort of technology becomes integrated into AP, where um, my background before I was at the AP Association, I was working for a P2P software house provider and we were working with various pay, payment software providers to talk about integration, almost to provide a payment button at AP stage. So the invoice matches the uh, PO within an ERP. The integration to a payment provider should be a button at that stage to just pay it. So that's where I see those kind of integrations being more of an end to end process. So it's interesting to, to work with you guys and understand what software you're integrating into and how that process could take place. Because I think yeah. it will be, it's part of the automation journey. So it's bound to be, um, and certainly is coming up in the Q program and in many of the conversations we have. I suppose it's one of those of people wanting to stay within the same user interfaces and not have to log in and out of various different systems because that's where errors start to occur when people are jumping between screens. So if, as you say, if there's that, button that they can use to make the payments out to the suppliers or various entities within the UI that they're using day to day. I suppose that really if streamlines that process for them and doesn't mean they're having to find their card reader or whatever for the various banking soft softwares that they use. That's exactly it. I mean, with the, going back to the point I made on ERP and implementations where um, they're given the suite because 
the finance or procurement team have specced it out, but not really discussed it in depth with that particular department, particularly not AP. Every key program we've done, when we ask that question, it seems that they're not really considered in that implementation, uh, both from a payment software provider point of view, how are you paying suppliers? Not really discussed. How are you ingesting invoices and what data you need from it? Not really discussed. And also the business intelligence and visualization of that data, that's also not really discussed. So in the Q program, we are really encouraging those teams to go back to their solution partners or whoever is building that full ERP roadmap and saying, we need to seat at the table here. We need to be involved in the conversation. AP is such a massive part of a business's operation, um, should be in lockstep with procurement and um, is in most of the cases we see taking care of a huge amount of supplier management um, far more than probably they should be. But it's if it's falling with AP, then it's that link to procurement and it should be in the software and automated um, from end to end. Yeah, it's certainly. It's certainly something I've always spoken about in both accounts payable and the payroll spaces. If you stop paying people correctly and on time, they're soon going to stop working with you, which is essentially going to be a bit of a hindrance to your business overall, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So it does really highlight how important these functions are within the business units. Um, just before we finish, I'm guessing the Q program is well signposted on the AP Association website. Just if anyone's watching that they can go and get more information about it and reach out to you guys to kind of get a bit more info. Is that, is that is it easily there? Yeah, if you go to the AP Association website, Association website, it's um, but, uh, you'll see best practice um, right in the middle of the page. Click that; that will give you all the information on the Q program itself and how how to sign up. Also, um, you'll find me on LinkedIn, and there's various posts. Latest one is about uh, does your business shine with the golden Q or not, um, and that is um, the accreditation. So people are latching onto that and going, well, we need to be involved in it. So direct message me if that's your preferred route um otherwise it's all over the website and absolutely we'll be sharing more marketing information of that um as we develop the program yeah i'm just going to come to you both now max what would be your top three reasons to check out the q program and then mike the same thing to you but why would they check out the ap association just to uh, finish this off okay so my top three on the q program would be if you are not doing the q program you don't know how you benchmark across the top performing ap teams in the UK and globally. So there's that comparison. There's the benchmarking as well. So once you're in the Q program, you can share that best practice with the other Q program on the APA community. So you can bounce off it and you can avoid some real pitfalls with selecting the wrong software, selecting the wrong process. Um, Third thing is that you get the recognition in your team. So that team for retention purposes now have an award. So they're less likely to leave. Um, and we've seen that firsthand. So that's my top three. Yeah. And um, Mike, for you, for the AP- APA? Yeah, so the, the the why, the why behind it. Well, it's first and foremost, it's the support that the, you're not going to get anywhere else other than the APA. We are, I think, the largest in Europe. We're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're very well recognised for doing what we do. We're quite specialised by, de- by design. Um, and for professionals in the function, um, the the support they get from their peers and from ourselves as an association is unrivaled. And with that, obviously, you've got people in different sectors, different challenges, different, you know, their journeys are different. You know, there's, we, 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 we had a poll actually at our last conference where Jamie asked, I think it was over 450 people in the room, he asked them to put their hand up if when they were at school they wanted to be a, an AP manager. And only two people had even heard of what an AP manager was when they were at school. And that's, and, and with many jobs over, over time, you find yourself doing a job that you had no idea even existed. Um, and, and the challenges of that is that, you know, explaining what you do to others can be challenging, but also finding the help you need sometimes can also be uh, difficult. So we, we, we exist to serve our members in that way. Um, and, and like I say, learn from each other and, and we're always learning ourselves. Uh, we don't profess to know it all. Um, um, we encounter different um, things every day, and we're we're well resourced. You know, on the fraud side, we're working with the the Met Police, serious crime teams. We're working with people such as yourselves in payments and banking in very specialist fields. We've got people from construction and retail and food manufacturing, and it's actually quite um, it's quite a vibrant community because of its diversity. And um, and yeah, that's the why. 
get you got to be in it to win it. You get involved. Yeah, no, certainly. I know we're going to be hosting other things with you where moving forward. So I know we're looking at doing a round table for to get some more of these ideas and sit and discuss it as a group. So we can certainly take those away and uh, ask people to reach out. What I would say is to anyone that's watching, if you want more information on any of this, then please do reach out to any of the panelists. I can point you in the right direction to Mike and Max. If you've got me on LinkedIn or whatever, then I'm happy to make those introductions. But really, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, explaining more about what the secrets of the Q program actually is and actually giving us a bit more of an insight into the Accounts Payable Association. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. you for your time yeah